Hey there. I'm going to wait just a minute for everybody to log on. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. Um, a lot of you probably already know me, or because I only really advertise this in groups with my friends. My name is Meg. I work under the name Armis Adventures. I am a social media manager for a few brands, and then I also uh, coach people one-on-one -on -one with their branding and online web presence. So today, I wanted to share the basics of MailChimp, because I remember what it was like five years ago, my first time trying to figure out how to navigate this newsletter system for my scrapbooking company, and it was just completely overwhelming for me. And I know that's still how it is today for a lot of people, even though it's gone through like five different transformations over the years. So I want to start, uh, obviously right now I already have an account set up. You should be able to see my screen here. Um, this is what you'll see after you've uh, started your account, except it'll actually not have that crossed out. And it, for whatever reason, it decided to do that for me. So I wanted to discuss, um, the weird questions, or it's going to feel like it's weird uh, when you register, it's going to ask for your address. And that's because the Can Spam Act and a few other international laws require a mailing address to be included in every single email newsletter. That's just a little kind of a thing to ensure that spammy messages aren't going to go out everywhere. Uh, if you're uncomfortable doing that, which pretty much everyone is. I recommend if you're in America, just get a PO box. It's like 12 bucks for six months in some areas. It's really, really cheap. And it's good to have if you have a website because you now have to give your address and everything when you register a domain name. Okay, so the other weird thing uh, that a lot of people get held up on is it asks for the category of your business. So like there's agriculture and food, restaurants, um, marketing, Blog, well, it doesn't have blogging, but that's an important question to answer as accurately as possible because once you start sending out your newsletters, MailChimp, it tracks all of this information for you, like how many times a newsletter gets opened, what links are clicked on, um, what people are, you know, their emails are bouncing back, all of that stuff. And what it does is it compares your numbers to the numbers of other people in like the same kind of business category for you. So like if you're getting like 5% opens, it lets you know, oh, well this, you know, the number of opens for your category is, you know, 10% or whatever. Those are just really low numbers. I'm just giving low numbers. Anyways, that way you can see, okay, I need to improve a little bit so I can kind of get ahead of the other people that are in my industry as far as newsletters go. Okay, let me check my notes real quick before I move on to... Okay, so that's creating your account. Uh, it's going to ask a whole bunch more questions than that, but those are the two that I... Everything else is straightforward, but those are the two that I know a lot of people get hung up on. Okay, so first thing, now that we're in MailChimp, the first thing we have to do is create our list. Uh, let me define these terms up here for you first real quick, though. Campaigns, that's what most of us think of as newsletters. So each email you send out is a campaign. So it's just like an advertising campaign for like Pepsi. This is just a newsletter campaign. Templates, you're probably only ever going to go to this tab maybe three times at the most. This is where you design what the bare bones of your newsletters look like. Lists, this is, you know, straightforward. This is your address lists. Um, reports, that's um, what I was talking about earlier, how it breaks down the number of clicks and stuff like that. Automation, this, I believe, is completely paid only. It basically, it, yeah, this is paid only. What this does is say you want to send out, it's called a drip campaign uh, with other newsletter providers. They call it automation here. So 
if you want to send out a newsletter like seven days after they've subscribed or 14 days after they subscribed, kind of like, you know, a weekly seven steps to healthy living kind of a thing, that's where you would set this up. Because all you do is you write the newsletters, you set up the parameters of how often they're to go out, and it does it all for you. Okay. Sorry for jumping around. <laughs> I promise from here on out, I'm going to stick to the topic at hand. Okay, just want to. Okay, I have a question. What kind of content can you use MailChimp to deliver to your customer base? And how often do you deliver content to keep unsubscribed numbers low? Uh, well, both of those questions vary a lot depending on what niche you work in. Uh, like some niches do better when it's a quarterly, which is very, very few. Uh, or weekly or bi-monthly and stuff like that. I say start off twice a month at the most. That way uh, it's not something that's happening every single day. Like when I was sending out the reminders for this webinar, I felt horrible like sending three in one day to remind people. But when it's a webinar, you have to do it that often because I'm an airhead and I know what it's like when I, you know, it's 4.15 and I've already missed the first 15 minutes of a webinar, you know, that kind of stuff. But if you're trying to sell a product, uh, you only want to do that when you're having sales or something's changed or if you just want to, you know, check in like, hey, here's a great article about, you know, something that's relevant to our, you know, followers and stuff like that. So it really varies. I might touch on that again as I go along. Uh, so I'm just going to leave that question there. I'm not going to uncheck it. OK. So lists. The list is all of your subscribers. And you can have multiple lists. You can have one um, for one company and another one for another. I'm going to show you how you can have one main list but still be able to target people very specifically, OK? So we hit the Create List button. And this is an example account that I'm using right now. It's making cooking easy. OK, so. You really want to make sure that you get this is a kind of cover your butt kind of a thing because you can get in trouble with the spam laws by not having uh, something in this box to explain how people are adding people are adding onto your list because people forget how they end up on email lists even though they're the ones that subscribe themselves that's we just have short-term memories that's how it is You can just say something simple like you subscribed using a form on our website or via, you know, a conference if you collect newsletter subscriptions at conferences and stuff like that. Uh, down here, this is completely optional. This is up here. That's the address we talked about. This is if you want to be notified, basically, of how often people are subscribing to your newsletter. I personally don't like the news, the clutter in my inbox, so I never select those. I just log in when I want to know. Oh, can't use the at sign. And there we go. OK, so this is just a little walkthrough thing because this is a new account. OK, so now we're going to talk about the sign up forms. This is the first thing you're going to want to edit once you've created your list. You don't want to start collecting emails and then have to go back and edit this. So we're going to click on Select next to the General Forms. And this is the most basic form that it pops up at default. Uh, you can put an image up here. And right here, you just add a message like, hey, you know, this is our, if you want to subscribe to our updates of new products, cooking tips, and other related information, you know, just some, something short and sweet, not blubbering like I am right now. And then 
the fields always have an email address. So you just click on the field that you want to edit, and over here on the right, it pops up uh, the parameters that you can edit for that. So I'm going to keep that as email address. Uh, you can't edit that because this is what tells MailChimp uh, what's being collected in that individual text area. Keep it required, of course, because this is an email newsletter. And keep it visible. And the help text, that's if you wanted to, you know, explain to them, this is the email address that you receive emails at. You know, you can do that if you want. Email address, I don't think you have to explain that. Uh, first name, last name. I sometimes, I just get rid of the last name because a lot of people don't like parting with that kind of information, even if it already is in their email address. And I found the more information you collect, the less likely they are to actually give you their email address. But like I said earlier, there's a lot of variation in how to do this depending on what field you're working in. So for like those of you that are selling on Teachers Pay Teachers, you want to know what grade level or what position they hold in the education field so that you can target very specific campaigns to people working, you know, as an administrator or in primary grades or secondary. So to collect that information, you don't want to create another text area like this. Instead, I would do a drop down, checkbox, something of that sort so that when you want to target them, you're not having to deal with, you know, they might have typed in third grade. Well, maybe some people spelled it out or some people did, you know, the number three and then RD. So that's where these drop downs come in handy. I'm just going to use that as an example, the different grade levels and stuff. So field lab label, we're going to put grade level. Uh, this tag is what uh, MailChimp recognizes, so it just it's for a spreadsheet. So I'm just going to put grade. Uh, this is where if you want it to be required for them to fill out in order to subscribe, I wouldn't require things unless it's the email address and like their name, because like I said, the more they have to give up, the less likely they are to subscribe. The rest of this is mostly straightforward. This you can leave blank. Uh, that's just, you know, if you wanted something to be the default. And so here you just put, you know, first grade, second, third, if you really want to break it up that much. I, you know, if teachers, I would break it up however you want, depending on what your products are or what your target is. Okay, so we go ahead and save that and it refreshes and there we go. It creates a little drop down. Now that's just setting up the different form areas to make this look better other than adding an image up here. I'm going to do one as an example real quick. Oh, that's where you can, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself here. I have to click on that. And you can either keep the title or delete it. So there we go. We have like a little logo up there. You add your text there. Okay, so design it. I'm up here, clicked on the design it tab. This is where you can change that background color. You can make it, you know, really bright red or whatever. I would keep it as tasteful as possible. Don't have a bright pink in the background because you want people to be attracted to what the form is and not, you know, unattracted. Okay, so that's the basics of creating the form for collecting email addresses and stuff. And up here, this is the URL. Later, I'm going to show you how you can em embed a form into your website and design it to match your website and stuff. But if you don't have a website and you're just wanting to collect email addresses, like if you're a virtual assistant and you want your clients to sign up for like an updates thing in case if you were to ever have an emergency, you would just send them this link. And you get to this link by going to lists, sign up forms, general forms, 
and then this page loads. Okay, so the next thing, let me make sure that I, okay, so in the same area here, I'm going to back up so that everybody can see again if they're just now joining us. This is the list tab, and then we're going to click on our newly created list because it appears here now. Sign up forms, general forms. So we're back to where we just were. Now, if you want to send an automated email with a freebie or a lead magnet, some kind of gift that people receive in exchange for signing up for your email list. In order to do that, you would go to this drop down and select the thank you page. Now, this is the page that they land on uh, after they've clicked on the email that says, you know, confirm your email address. Uh, right in here, you can include the download link to your freebie using, you know, Dropbox or whatever, wherever you want to host it. And then you can also send a welcome email that does the same thing. I say definitely do this, the welcome email, so turn it on by clicking on this button right here, and the thank you page. So put your freebie slash lead magnet on both of these because there's some people, you know, that'll catch it right away on the thank you page, and then there's also some people that are expecting that last email to come, a welcome email that has the link in there. So I, I just do both just to cover all of my bases. And then you can see in here there's other forms that you can edit if you want, but these are the three, the sign up form, the confirmation thank you page, and the welcome email. Those are the three that I say always edit. Even if you don't have a lead magnet for these two, you know, just give more of a personalized thank you note. So let me check and see if there's any questions. Oh. <laughs> One of my best friends, Alicia, has asked, looking for inspiration on how to use MailChimp to promote a new personal blog once it's ready to launch. Uh, if you're in that position, what I would do is start collecting emails even though you're not ready to launch yet. So if you have your domain name registered and you know you might not have the website designed or anything, I say go ahead and put the form up there and say, hey, Subscribe so that you get notified of when we launch. So that way, you know, people, you're already, you're not missing an opportunity to collect people's information. It seems kind of pushy, but, you know, there are people that want to get notified of when this new website will launch. And if you're a blogger who feels like you're just getting started and don't really have a reason to collect email addresses to build your list, don't hesitate to just go ahead and start doing it even if you're not going to email people right away because you don't want to get behind the eight ball when you do have a reason to send out a newsletter because that's one of the worst things you can do is put off your list building because algorithms for Pinterest and Facebook and Twitter, those are always changing. Like Facebook, you know, when was the last time we saw posts right away from our friends that they just posted at the top of our news feed. Like, that hasn't happened since, like, I was in college. <laughs> so, you know, email lists are always going to be there. You know, there's never going to, well, unless your email program changes and does weird things, like, you're still going to always receive emails in your inbox. That's one constant of the internet for now. <laughs> okay, so back on topic. So we've covered how to create your account, create your list, create your thank you page and welcome email with a free lead magnet. Um, oh, let me define lead magnet for you. So that's kind of one of those marketing buzz terms. The gist of it is it's a free thing to get people to sign up. I think I might have already said that, but I want to make sure I did. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our email template. This is the bare bones of our emails that are going to go out. This isn't the actual uh, email itself. So let me show you uh, one that I created ahead of time as an example. 
So this is, you know, my fake brand here. And I have that up in the header. And this is just like the absolute bare bones. So I'm going to go back and show you how to create this. So we're in the templates tab. We're going to hit create template. Now this is where a lot of people are like, ah, I'm completely overwhelmed. I say start with the basic and then switch things up if you feel like you need something that has more features than basic. So this is the basic one that I recommend, the one column. They have all sorts here. <laughs> Just ignore those for now. Once you're comfortable with MailChimp, move on to those. So we're going to select the one column. And this is what you see once you've selected it. These little things down here where it's like kind of like code and weirdness and stuff, don't touch this because this is, it'll auto populate. Like it has, you know, our mailing address. MailChimp puts that in from whatever you entered in. So that way you don't have to remember to edit your template whenever you update your contact info with MailChimp. Okay, so the things that I always make sure every template has is an image up here for branding and then social media follow links. So over here on the right side, Alicia, text me if I'm talking too fast, okay? So over here on the right, you just pick what you want. You click down, drag, and drop. And then it pops up the options for whatever area you just added. So in here, there's all kinds of options where you can add different services for people to contact you or follow you. Like there's Instagram, Google+, Pinterest. I say, you know, get those in there. You know, don't let a campaign go out without having other actionable links for people to follow you because everybody has different preferences as to how they want to follow you. So I'm going to leave that. Uh, oh, and you can also change, like, I kind of don't like how it's this gray box behind it. So I've clicked on the edit thing right there. And then over here on the right again, there's content style and settings. I'm going to click on style. And then here I can change that color from the background. I'm just going to go all the way white. And then the border, none. So there we go. It's just seamless with the rest of the template. And then settings. Uh, this is you can change the style, like if you wanted them to all be the same color or outlined, you know, this, they have so many different ways to do this. It's, you're, there's going to be something for everyone, okay? And now if you want to edit, like, this background gray color, we're clicked out of the editing for that. We go over to the right again and click on design. It's really tempting to click on body. Don't do that. You're going to want to click on page. And then here we can adjust the background color. Again, don't do bright colors like that because you're going to burn people's retinas. You can adjust it like this. Just kind of play around or whatever image editor you use for your logo and stuff, you can pick a color directly out of that or something that matches your website. So that's a nice blue. And then one thing that I absolutely love about MailChimp is you can drag and drop images and image placeholders. So I'm going to drag that logo in again. And it's, by default, it aligns it to the left. So I clicked on the Edit button. I'm going to go Settings, Align, Center. And you can link this uh, by clicking on Content again can link. Uh, they actually do have a built-in editor. I never use this because I'm a Photoshop girl, but you can edit images if you want to in there. Close out. That's actually a pretty nice feature because everything's all in one. So we have, this is the content block uh, for where your content goes, your actual email, like just writing stuff in. I never change this in my template, but that's just, again, personal preference. So you can just uh, leave that as is, or if you want to put certain placeholders in that you can change later, you can just do whatever you want. So I'm not going to touch any of these because I'm going to show that 
these to you uh, once we do an actual campaign. So I'm going to save and exit. Uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions, okay? It's there will be a delay, but I'm you know trying to keep an eye out, and Alicia's been told to text me if there's something that I'm ignoring completely. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to name this you know basic template. Save. Check my notes real quick. Make sure I covered everything. Okay, yeah, so that's as easy as just dropping in your links and your logo and changing the background. So now we have our form out there collecting email addresses. We have a lead magnet going out to the people who confirm their subscription. And we have a basic template going. So when we're finally ready to send out our first campaign, what do we do? We click over to ca the campaigns tag. just dismiss this I'm gonna create a campaign now this is the first thing that pops up once you have hit create campaign incredibly confusing right ignore these three these are more advanced for when you're com comfortable with yeah when you create a new template I'll show you that Christina okay it's this is the beauty of MailChimp. You can have multiple different templates and change it up depending on what you want to do with your campaigns. So we're going to do a regular campaign, a send to entire list, and of course we have zero right now because this is an example. Okay, so this is another overwhelming page. Uh, you don't have to worry about pretty much everything from over here and down here because some of these like this one's a paid feature only so this first box that's for your reference only so like today's the 23rd so I like to do 2015-0723 that's just my own uh, numbering things so that I can always you know sort by date example campaign so I do the date and you know I give something to tell myself, you know, what this campaign was about. So like, you know, say that making cooking easy is selling, you know, new meat thermometers or something. So I put, you know, the date and meat thermometer campaign. So email subject. Try to be conversational. Try to pick something that you would open. That's my mantra. Think like a follower. What would a follower click on? What would your target person click on? And this is where I always get stuck in my own campaigns when I'm writing them. Sometimes I just, you know, do a draft and, you know, something really corny like that. I just put that out there and then I come back and edit it later. This isn't, you know, permanent. You have to fix it before. Um, sorry, I got distracted. You can change this at any time. Okay. So the from name, have it be something that people will recognize. And this is something that uh, I learned the hard way. I volunteer for my local Parkinson's disease support group. And I put um, the letters that abbreviation of our name, which is the Greater Fresno Parkinson Support Group. So I just put, you know, GFPSG and as the you know from thing and people were like who's that so I had to change it to Fresno Parkinson's so always you know have something that you know you yourself would open and then always make sure that track opens is turned on because you want to know if people are opening your emails so now we click next and here's where your question comes up Christina so here this is familiar because we just came across this when we were creating our template Instead of clicking on these, ignore them, click over to saved templates. So now we have the one that I created before we logged on here and the one that we just made. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the one we just made. So this way you can have, you know, if you have regular newsletters from a certain topic like uh, kitchen tips and then you have another one that's another targeted group or something like that for um, healthy living information, you can have a different template for each one. Okay, so I like to work from the top down. 
this up here, I'm going to put my mouse over to the side. Uh, this up here is where you're able to give a little blurb beyond the title that your subject line. So say, you know, you want to get something to hook them other than just the title. So it can go longer than a line, it doesn't matter. You want to keep it short still, but get enough information in there that they'll want to click on it and open your email. So we hit save and close. So now we can work on the body here. Like all of these parts from the template are still editable. It was just like the bare bones, just like when you're making a soup, you make the mirepoix and then you move on to the other ingredients. So if you want to edit, you know, the text, you click on that little pencil thing. And then new meat thermometers, if I'm even going to spell that right, probably. Oh, no, I did. So that's a title line. You can change this by clicking this drop down right here and select different styles. It's just like in Word, how Word has um, those blocks across the top where you can hit heading and bullets and stuff like that. And then a subtitle. Sometimes I just repeat what I put in that blurb box up here. And then, you know, if you want a paragraph, I'm going to show you how to insert an image. So we click on, oops, I moved too fast. We click on that little thing right there. I'm just going to insert the logo again. And it's all drag and drop. Like, that's what I love about this. I'm just dragging and dropping it from my files on my other monitor. And it uploads. Obviously, I could have clicked it from in here because I've already uploaded it. I'm going to hit Select. Now, you can, right in here, you can put in a URL. You can adjust the height. And then we can click on this and set it to align in text to the right, to the left. So I'm going to select right there, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a, a margin, a little bit of space between the text and the image. And there we go, it inserted. So I can kind of drag it so it goes up there. Oops, that just messes it up. I'm going to delete that because it does that. I just wanted to show you how to insert it. And then another way to get images in there, this is my favorite uh, tool in MailChimp for doing the newsletters. Like say you want to send out a weekly newsletter with your blog post from the week. If you're a blogger that blogs prolifically and has more than one blog post a week, I applaud you. <laughs> so here's that same kind of drag and drop for an image. I'll just drag in, in there. So that pops up, and then you can put, you know, whatever text you want right there. And this is, the style is completely changeable. So we're going to go up here to style. Oops, no, setting. Back up. So go to settings. And the caption is positioned. So right here, the caption is on the right. We can switch it so that it's on the bottom, so that the image is on top. We can switch it to the left. We can adjust how wide it is, like we can make it a teeny tiny little image or a really big image. And then we can even change up the number of images. Um, this, this I only like to do when I have the caption position on the bottom or the top uh, so that they're side by side. And that's why I said, you know, don't let those different template styles uh, create fear in you right away because you're still able to get that appearance by using this basic template because of these different content tools that you can drag and drop in. So like if you wanted to highlight a different blogger in your like an interview with them in your newsletter, you could drag and drop different social links for them. Or if you wanted to create, you know, a collage of images with no captions, you could drag and drop those in and then add dividers, like all of this is so easy. I wish Word would, Word would be this easy. OK, so um, any questions about how to edit this at all?
I'm gonna sit here for a few seconds because there's about like a 10 second delay. I'm gonna go over my notes real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna show once again that it's just like in Word with the different headers and stuff like that. You select the text. If you ever get stuck and like the formatting is weird, you just select it all and click this button that says clear styles. That way, you know, the HTML code is completely stripped and you can start from scratch again as far as like, you know, making the headers and stuff like that. If you really wanted to personalize things and like have their name in the intro, and you don't want to have to, you know, manually send out an email to each individual person, you can type your greeting and then go to your merge tag. And this is auto-populated from what you collect in your forms and hit first name. And it pops in this little code. And what that code does is it tells MailChimp as it's sending out these newsletters, you need to fill this spot with that person's first name before it ends up in their inbox. So that way you're able to be very one-on-one -on -one with people and people like that kind of personal touch and then just write your email. Okay, so now I wanna show you the next step where you either proof and send out or schedule however you wanna send things. Um, you can hit up here, preview and test. And this is a somewhat new feature where it shows you how things appear in a cell phone. This, don't rely on this as if it's you know, gospel because every phone and every app for emails and stuff shows things differently still when it comes to a mobile device. So don't worry too much if you know it looks perfect to you but then you get an email from someone that says, hey, it was all you know stretched out you know, just kind of do your best as far as mobile goes. Because as you can see, it doesn't have those these images side by side in here. It's all one long block. Okay, so that's how we do preview it before going out. And like, it'll show, you know, test first name. It's just like mail merge and word. And then let's see, you can send yourself a test email so that you can view it in your own inbox. Um, inbox inspection. Uh, this is a paid feature only, but what it does is it opens up a whole bunch of different browsers and email programs and sends you a screenshot of what your emails look like in each individual inbox. That shouldn't be a problem for you unless you're like changing the actual code to the template. Okay. So this, this is after you hit the next button on design it pops up a checklist. Obviously, it's gonna be read like, hey, you're not sending this to anyone. And this is, don't worry about this. This is if someone were to link to your individual newsletter that went out. Uh, it's just so that, you know, like the link preview image for Facebook shows up. I don't ever enable that because most of the newsletters that I send out for clients are for only their readers. Okay, you can change, um, the subject line and everything in here. Now, it won't light this up for me because I don't have anyone in the list, but down here in the bottom right is where you can either send it automatically or send it immediately or schedule it. And in the scheduling, it has three different options. There's, you know, you set the time or you can have it send out in like batches of five. Like if you're anticipating that as soon as this newsletter goes out, your website's gonna get overloaded or something. If you think that's gonna happen, you can select for it to send it out in numbered batches. And like the third option is a paid only option. But if you decide to start paying for MailChimp, it's the option that I would select, which is to have MailChimp pick the best time for your newsletter to go out. And what it does is it's kind of like targeted advertising campaigns on Facebook, it takes a look at your subscribers and what it thinks their location is in the world and picks the best time for the email to land in their inbox for them to open it. So if you have subscribers 
on the East Coast, but you're on the West Coast, it takes the guesswork out of the equation for you and goes off of their own fancy algorithms and stuff to schedule it. Okay. So I got all those taken care of. Okay. So we created our first campaign. Any questions? That's pretty much it as far as the signing up and then all the way to your first email campaign. Because next I want to show you how to add the form to your websites. Okay, no more questions came in so far, so I'm going to move on. So to get the HTML code for embedding on your Blogger blog or your WordPress blog, we go back to the Lists tab. You're going to be very familiar with this tab by the time this webinar is over. But this is the last thing. So we clicked on the list tab. We went, oh, we're going to click on our list. Back over to sign up forms. Now here's where it can get confusing again. If you're on Blogger, you're going to want to go over here to embedded forms. And within here, it's the same kind of setup as the um, when we are setting up our list where you can decide you know, only if you want to only show the required fields or all the fields and stuff like that. And then you just, once you have that set up how you want for on your website, and uh, of course you're going to want to adjust to like if your sidebar is only 200 pixels wide, you're going to want to adjust that number so that it doesn't blow out your sidebar. And then you just copy and paste this code into your widget. That's for people on Blogger. I don't know much about Blogger because it's been about 10 years since I've used that platform. Uh, but on WordPress, you have a few more options. And I want to really stress <laughs> that if you're going to use um, for either Blogger or WordPress, uh, if you use the subscriber pop-up code, um, Blogger, you're pretty much left with the code that uh, MailChimp gets you. With WordPress, you have a better option. Just a sec, my dogs are bugging me. The two plugins that I recommend for collecting email addresses on WordPress, uh, actually, it is possible for Blogger to have that pop up, but you're left with the code that um, MailChimp gives you, and you're not able to customize it in the way that I'm going to customize on WordPress. So, but you're still able to pick, you know, what forms, form fields you want to collect and stuff. But the reason I um, say that you're kind of stuck with that, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, is because in WordPress, with there's several different plugins, but the one I recommend is Pop-Up Alley. You're able to set it so that it only pops up when the browser senses that the person is leaving your website. And this is key because that means, you know, they're done with what they were doing on your website and they're more inclined to then go and fill out the form because it's there in their face, they're done with what they were reading, whereas with the MailChimp code, people are in the middle of reading or they just landed there and it pops up in their face and it's trying to grab them before they're even able to get to the content that they went there in the first place for. So that kind of annoys people like, you know, when you're on your cell phone and you're browsing, you know, Facebook and you click on a link and this newsletter form pops up and like, geez, I just wanted to read the article. This is annoying. With this pop-up display plugin, you're able to set it so that it doesn't annoy people as much. So that's just kind of one trade-off between WordPress versus Blogger. I say stick with Blogger if that's what you're familiar with and you already have enough stuff on your plate. Don't make the switch to WordPress just because of wanting to build your email list in a different way. Okay, so I'm gonna back up and I wanna talk about the two plugins that I recommend for collecting emails on WordPress. MailChimp does have their own plugin, and uh, I've used it for probably two years. 
and then I switch to easy MailChimp forms. Okay, we've got another question. Let me see if I can hide these so that I can... I have seen some where it shows the product when you click on it. That's when it prompts you to sign up and get the free item. How is that done? Um, over here, for those of you that are on Blogger, it would be in this design where you're able to drop in an image. And then after you've edited all of this, you click Generate Code. Uh, so you could pop in an image that describes you know, what the freebie is and stuff, and you can add text in there. Um, in WordPress, that's the plugin, the pop-up alley plugin. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. How do I determine the ideal sidebar width in Blogger? Okay, let me, this is my, this isn't my own live website. This is just the test website where I work on my designs. If you're in Chrome for your Blogger, you can right click on what you want to check and hit inspect element. In Firefox, I believe this is called um, Firebug. And it, when you mouse over in the code, it gives you the width of things. So like here, this one's 300 pix pixels. So that's how you're able to, you know, figure out what your sidebar width is and stuff. I would subtract, you know, like 10 pixels or something like that just to be careful. I think that was Peggy. Mark that off. Mark this one off. Sorry, I'm just making sure that I get all of the questions. Okay. So that's how, no matter you know what system you're using, if you ever need to figure out what the width of your sidebar is or you know, your blog posts, like if you, all of a sudden you have images that are too wide for your blog posts, this is just a neat little tangent blog trick <laughs> to figure out, you know, the different widths of things. Okay. So I want to start with easy MailChimp forms first. This plugin, after you've installed it in WordPress, you click over here in the, I'm in the back end of WordPress right now. Uh, MailChimp settings. This I wanted to show you because this is where people get hung up when installing uh, plugins for MailChimp and stuff, whether it's here on a WordPress install or Facebook or something like that. I'm going to open this up. An API key is basically a code that allows your website to talk with your MailChimp account. So to get the API key, let me double check because they do change this up. Okay. So I'm going to save and exit, close. I'm going to click on my account up here, extras, and then API keys. I'm going to create a key so that I can show you guys how this works. So that's it. Paste it in there. And so now it's verifying that this is a correct key. I'm going to save it. Okay, so now I'm going to go over to Manage List Forms. I'm going to select my list, Create Form. So this is just like when we were in the back end of MailChimp and moving around our forms and stuff. This is where you can delete, um, like if you didn't want to collect the grade level. And so now I'm, I'm not even going to touch any of this because um, like we want the welcome email to go out. Uh, you can, if you have a specific page you want to redirect them to, you can do that. I'm not going to touch any of that right now. So I'm going to go to Appearance, Widgets. And this is where you can just drag and drop the form from your available widgets into your sidebar. And then select which form you want. And I'm not, I don't even need a little message there because this is just an example. 
I'm going to refresh my test site here. And there we go. The form is now in my sidebar. I didn't have to touch code or anything. I just really all I had to do was copy the API key. Now the reason I prefer this, this plugin over the MailChimp one is because they have this handy dandy, let me, there we go. I'm trying to, I've already forgotten where it is. <laughs> Manage list forms. It's on, there we go, I needed to click on that. So what I like about this is I'm able to copy this little code right here. So say I'm making a blog post about the freebie that I'm giving out to my newsletter subscribers or a blog post to announce that I'm, you know, having a new series in my newsletter coming out like seven steps to great health and stuff like that. I don't have to direct them to a different page for them to subscribe. I can have them subscribe right in the blog post. So I copied this little short code. Sorry, it looks like my internet is taking a hit from the broadcast. I'm just gonna edit the little holder post that WordPress puts in. I'm gonna paste in that code this blog post so now we have the form right in the blog post and what's great the reason you want to do this over directing them to a different page to fill out a form or telling them go to the sidebar is every time you tell them to take an additional action you're more likely to lose them from signing up for your newsletter so you want to direct them to the form immediately and obviously I'm not the best example of that because I directed people to different places to sign up for this webinar, but don't, don't do what I, you know, do practice what I actually preach or whatever the saying is. Okay. So for pop-up alley, which is the pop under that I recommend, uh, is that just an, yeah. In blogger, what you have to do is copy you go back to lists and then click on the list and you pretty much copy the same exact embed form code that you copied um, to put it in your sidebar. And sometimes, like I said, I'm not really familiar with Blogger anymore. And I know sometimes Blogger kind of eats code and doesn't display it. So it might work, it might not work. Um, to really get it to work, you're gonna wanna do the naked which is as basic as it gets and I got that by clicking over to the naked tab right here so you can uh, get this under the same area where you got the code for in your sidebar oh thank you Christina I'm gonna plus one that okay so let me select these questions so definitely I want to just say again as few steps as possible, take as few steps as possible when trying to get people to subscribe to your newsletter. That way that you're more likely to get them and you can always, like if you need additional information like their grade level, you can collect that later. Okay, so where was I? I have to backtrack in my own brain here. So in WordPress for this pop under, I call them pop unders, they're, it's kind of an old term, but it's really a pop-up. To do this, it's the same code that we were having the blogger people get. So we, I went over to pop-up alley in my back-end sidebar here. I'm gonna select exit intent because I want it to show when they're mousing away from the page. And just for example, I'm selecting all pages. And this is where um, you can set it to show like every, you know, seven days. So if someone's a regular visitor, it's not displaying for them every single time that they visit. And 14 days is kind of like the industry standard. Uh, it's what a lot of the top bloggers use. I don't mess with this, the thank you page thing. I just don't touch it. 
So we're now going to save those settings. And now we're going to edit the actual form. So over here, again on the left, style settings. Now this is where we paste in the sign up form HTML. So I'm going to go back to uh, just the classic. I'm going to copy and paste this. Other plugins are going to work like the, the MailChimp forms one, uh, other pop-up plugins. I just prefer this one because it uses a whole lot less resources. And if resources are a problem on your blog, um, stick with this one instead of AppSumo because AppSumo, their Sumo Me plugin has so many different features that it really overwhelms a lot of hosts, shared hosted websites and stuff. Plus, you have to pay for a lot of their features. This one, you're able to put in whatever form items you want, like the grade level and stuff like that. Whereas AppSumo, they just let you collect the email address and they want you to pay if you want to collect more. So here's where you can edit, you know, the text color, the background, you can have a different call to action. Uh, you can upload a different image to show right here. So I'm going to upload that. Same one. And then you can just edit all of this. Um, I, I would leave this because for a lot of people, that's a hold up. Like they think, oh, they're collecting email addresses that they're just going to sell. You know, you want to kind of reassure them, pat their back. No, I'm not, you know. Okay, and this is if you wanted to have a second pop-up, like if you had a website on your page that was dedicated to just a certain type of person and only that type of person would land there and you had a different list for them, that's where you would do this. So I'm going to save settings. And here's our preview. So that's all it was, just copying in the code from MailChimp, uploading a little image. Like if you had a freebie, you could upload the cover image for your free ebook or whatever and type in, you know, your call to action. And this, I'm, it probably is not going to pop up for me because I have the cookies on my computer, but we'll see. There we go. It popped up. What do you know? And you just fill out the form, hit subscribe, and it's just like the form in your sidebar. So I've covered pretty much everything that I had planned to cover. How to, you know, start from after creating your account all the way through to creating your templates and your campaigns, getting the form on your website. So is there anything else? Any other questions? I just want to touch again on Tamara's question. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. Pretty much any content. So, but like my mantra, you know, think like a follower. What do my followers like? What do they want to see? That's the content that I would deliver to their inbox because inbox clutter is a huge problem these days because we subscribe to so many different things. You want to deliver valuable content that you know they're going to want to open. And I would just kind of play with it as far as how often it goes. And then any other questions? And I want to say real quick, if you do want to create a freebie for you to get a newsletter subscriber, eBooks are huge. And Pat Flynn, his website, uh, Smart Passive Income, he has a tutorial on how to go through from start to finish using Word to create your, your um, freebie and stuff like that. And for creating images, um, Canva, which is C-A-N-V-A, they have a free image editor that's browser-based for you to create a cover image. Oh, thank you, Lynn. <laughs> I don't know if this was wonderful, but yes, there will be a recording of this webinar um, on the event page that you started watching it on, plus it'll uh, be on YouTube. And uh, so that'll, the link, I'm going to send that out again in my uh, newsletter. And I also wanted to say on Monday, same time, I'm going to have another webinar on how to use Buffer for Pinterest. Uh, Buffer is now a Pinterest API partner, meaning they have permission from Pinterest themselves to be a scheduler for their platform. And that's uh, coming up Monday. And that's my favorite scheduling tool for pretty much every uh, platform now. 
would I recommend <laughs> uh, offering both a weekly digest or daily email, one or the other? I would reduce it as much as possible to no more than emailing people weekly because, like I said, inbox clutter. Uh, I would send it on, you know, a day that you seem to get the most success. Uh, but for a blog, if you have, you know, more than one post going out a week, I would only send it, you know, Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon as far as a uh, weekly digest goes. I wouldn't do a daily digest because um, that just overwhelms people. Any other questions? If you do have any other questions, and I, it doesn't pop up here before I close out because of the time delay, uh, you can go ahead and uh, reach me at meg at armisadventures.com or connect with me on my Facebook page, which is incredibly neglected, even though I'm a social media manager for others, and that's facebook.com backslash armisadventures. And thank you so much, everyone, for showing up to my first ever webinar that I've done by myself and not for a client. <laughs> uh, just let me email me also if you have any other uh, ideas for a webinar for something that you want to learn about but don't have a clue as to where to start. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks again.